the father of the Turks. That's what Ataturk means. And it was the title and surname given to Mustafa Kemal to honor him as the leader and driving force behind the creation of modern Turkey. His exploits in the First World War are legend, and it was his tactical skills that were the real secret in both his military and political career. So, Mustafa Kemal Ataturk. My name is Indy Nidel. Welcome to another special episode of Who Did What in World War I. Mustafa was born in May 1881 in Saloniki, today's Thessaloniki, in what is now Greece, but what was then part of the Ottoman Empire. His actual birth date is unknown, but he chose May the 19th himself. His father was a timber dealer and a former customs lieutenant who died when Mustafa was seven years old, while his mother came from a long-established rural family. He grew up in fairly modest circumstances and had five siblings, but only one, a sister, survived childhood. After the death of the father, the family moved to the countryside to live with one of Mustafa's uncles, and Mustafa did not attend school regularly until he moved back to Saloniki at the age of nearly 10. He wasn't there for long, though, dropping out at the age of 12. But he eventually applied to a middle school, was accepted, and graduated in 1895 as one of the top students. This is apparently where he was given his surname, Kemal, from his math teacher. It was in praise of his skills. Kemal means perfect in Arabic. After graduation, he attended cadet school in Manastir, now in Macedonia. In 1899, he moved to Constantinople, the capital of the empire, now Istanbul, and became an officer at the military academy. He remained there until 1902, but was arrested shortly after leaving by government intelligence and spent several months in prison for opposition to the government. See, Mustafa had joined the opposition party wall at the academy, which supported Western-style reform movements and wanted greater self-determination and autonomy in the empire, rather than the absolute power of the sultan. The academy's director intervened and got Mustafa released, and soon enough, he was a captain employed by the war office. In Damascus, he founded a secret organization called Fatherland and Freedom, and shortly afterwards himself became a member of the Committee for Union and Progress, otherwise known as the Young Turks, a large opposition organization. In 1908, as an army chief of staff, he supported the Young Turks Revolution, which deposed the Sultan and restored a constitutional government. In 1910, Mustafa visited Western Europe for the first time. His famous quote, there are different cultures, but only one civilization, the European one, comes from that visit. In 1911 and 12, he fought as a major in the Italian-Turkish War. Now this war showed the cracks in the foundations of the empire. And in 1912, Greece, Serbia, Montenegro, and Bulgaria formed an alliance to exploit those cracks and attack the empire in October. This was the first Balkan War, and Mustafa fought in Gallipoli and Bolayu. After the war, he worked as a military attaché, and in 1914, he became lieutenant colonel in the Ottoman embassy in Sofia. So when the First World War broke out, Mustafa Kemal lived in Bulgaria. The Ottoman Empire fought with the German Empire during World War I, and in January 1915, the 19th Division of the 5th Turkish Army was assigned to Mustafa Kemal. He transferred to Gallipoli, and his fantastic exploits against the Allies while defending at Gallipoli brought him worldwide fame and attention, as well as military glory. His forces beat back the British and French forces time and again, and as the Gallipoli campaign ended in defeat for the Allies, Mustafa Kemal was praised throughout the empire, even with the hundreds of thousands of Ottoman lives lost. After Gallipoli, he was stationed in Edirne and Diyarbakir. Promoted to Major General in April 1916, he fought to recapture Mush and Bitlis from the Russians, and after short battles in Damascus and Aleppo, he returned to Constantinople. In early 1918, he visited the Ottoman Crown Prince Vahideddin, later Sultan Mehmet VI, also meeting German Kaiser Wilhelm II, German Quartermaster General Erich Ludendorff, and Field Marshal Paul von Hindenburg, as they planned spring offensives, and that's pretty impressive company. In June 1918, Mehmet became Sultan of the Empire, the last one as it turned out. Mustafa was made commander of the 7th Army, with the task of defending Syria against the British advance. Now this would prove to be an impossible task, and Mustafa Kemal could only organize a coordinated retreat until the Treaty of Mudros on October 31st ended the campaign. 
After the war, Mustafa returned to Constantinople. The empire collapsed after the war, and the peace treaty of Sevres in 1920 actually partitioned the empire among the victors and the indigenous peoples. The treaty was never ratified, though, because the Turkish War of Independence brought everyone back to the negotiating table. Mustafa Kemal was both the political and military leader during that war defending his country against foreign incursion and cementing his position as the man in charge, even when turmoil in the country resulted in massacres of both Armenians and Greeks. Okay, this is way too brief to do justice to either the story of the war or the civilian tragedies. But to cut it even shorter, after four years of war, the modern Republic of Turkey was founded, with Mustafa Kemal as its first president, a post he would hold for 15 years, being honored with the surname Ataturk in 1934. He was and is the symbolic figure of Turkish national consciousness. I lived in Istanbul for a bit back in the mid-1990s, and even then, every house, shop, or restaurant had a photograph of Ataturk prominently displayed, to a degree that I personally have never seen of any other figure in any other country. Now, it's not really my job to talk about his career as president, since much like the War for Independence, this is well outside the scope of this show. But I encourage you all to read more about one of the 20th century's legendary figures. Mustafa Kemal Ataturk died of cirrhosis of the liver November 10th, 1938. He was initially laid to rest in the Ethnography Museum in Ankara, the new capital of Turkey, but in 1953 was moved to a huge mausoleum that overlooks that city. Now here's a bizarre but cool piece of trivia. One of Ataturk's adopted daughters was the world's first female fighter pilot. Seriously. So there you have it. A man who in many ways was larger than life. Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, the father of all Turks and the driving force behind the creation of modern Turkey. If you want to see how the whole Gallipoli mess really got going, check out this episode about the first landings and how Mustafa Kemal was involved in the defense. And let us know if there's another important figure from the war that you'd like to learn more about. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.